Hey guys, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can connect a Postgres database to our Django project. So what we're gonna do is actually download Postgres and PG admin, which is just an interface that allows us to work with Postgres and we'll create a database and then connect it to this app. But in the second half of the video, what we're gonna do is actually put this database on AWS. So we'll actually create it on Amazon Web Services and then connect it to our local project. So the project will be local. We're not gonna launch it just yet but the database will be live in something that we can use once we put this project on a server. So I'm not gonna to spend too much time on Postgres and PG admin, but I will go through the actual process of installation and I'll just make some comments here and there once we get things set up. So go ahead and open up your browser and just do a search for Postgres. And mine's gonna probably auto-complete it, but I'll just go ahead and do the Google search. And from here, we can just do download and select the option that works for you. I'm on Windows, so we're gonna click that right there. And we're gonna click Download Installer. So this is gonna give us the installer to actually install the Postgres database. So I'm on Windows again, and I just want the latest version. So select what you need here, but this will probably work if you're on Windows. And this is gonna give us, a, uh, this is gonna take a second. So just give it a couple minutes here to download the installer, and I'll probably just fast forward through this, but once it's ready, we'll go ahead and start working with that. Okay, so my installer just downloaded, so we can just open that up here and probably close out this browser. And just go ahead and click yes here. So I already have Postgres installed, so my process might look a little bit different from yours, but for the most part, it's gonna be the same. And one thing you need to be aware of is that you're gonna be prompted for a password through this process if this is your first time. So make sure you save that password because that is gonna be the password that we need to log in to PG admin. So just make sure you remember that password and save it somewhere. And I'll just go ahead and let this install run and I'll probably just fast forward or just cut this part, but I'll get back to it once this install is complete. Okay, so let's go ahead and just finish all this up. And for the stack builder, we're gonna do PostgreSQL. And we're gonna do the database server and we're gonna do Postgres 10.1 and just finish up this process. So we'll skip the ins installation for now. And now what we need to do is actually download PG admin. So go ahead and open up your browser again and just do a search for PG admin and this is the website so this is the interface that's going to allow us to actually work with our postgres database so go ahead and hit download find the one that works for you i'm on windows and we're going to do the latest version and we're going to do this middle one here so i'm just going to click that and give this also a minute to just download and i'll probably cut this too okay so now that it's downloaded we can open this up and it's actually going to open this up in our browser so Go ahead and give this a minute, hit yes, and I'll close this out. And we'll just finish up this installation process, accept, and just go through all the defaults again. And when we hit finish, it should just launch it in our browser. So um, we'll just open this up and actually go ahead and create our first database. Okay, so it actually opened it up on my other screen, so it's just loading here. And again, it is gonna be on a local server, but in the browser. And this is the password that we needed to remember when we first created our Postgres installation. So go ahead and type that in. And this should log us into PG Admin. And from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a server group. So this is gonna be just a group that holds our databases. So to do that, we're gonna right click and we're gonna create our server group. And I'm just gonna call this one demo. And we'll save that. And within our server group, we're gonna create an actual server. And I'm gonna call this demo server. And we need to create a connection. So the connection right now is gonna be localhost. And our port number, in your case, you should probably leave it at 5432 unless you change that. But because I, uh, I had to install over my original one, mine is 54324, I believe. So make sure you're just aligned with whatever you have and specify that password again, um, that password that we created on that installation. So just make sure that aligns and I'll see if this one works for me. 
Okay, so that was created, perfect. And here is our server group, our server itself, and it already created a default database for us. So what I'm gonna do is actually create a completely new database within our server. So to create a new database, we just need to give it a name. And I'm gonna call this one uh, demo underscore test. And I believe that's the only parameters we need for now. Yeah, so we just need to give it a name. And once I save that, here's our database. We can make our connection. And if you go to schema, public, and then tables, right now we have no tables because we didn't migrate anything or we didn't actually create anything manually. So if I right click, we can create some, but we are using Django. So we're just gonna run migrate and it's gonna make all of this for us just like it did in our SQLite database. And before we go ahead and start connecting our database too, we need to run one quick pip install. And I already have this, but we need to pip install PsychoPG2. I believe that's how it's pronounced. And this is a database adapter that allows Postgres to talk to a Python, um, any kind of Python program. So we're gonna run this pip install. So I'm gonna just copy that because it's kind of weird to spell. And in my command prompt, I'm gonna run pip install and I'm just gonna paste that in. So PsychoPG2 and I already have it, so it's gonna tell me my requirements are filled, but just go ahead and let that run. And in here, now we need to change up a few things. So we're gonna change this from SQLite to Postgres. So this is gonna be PostgreSQL, all lowercase, and the name is gonna be the name of our new database. So where we're gonna find this is actually within PG Admin, it's just this database, so demo underscore test. So that's the new name and I'll just specify that, so demo underscore test. And now we need a user. So the user is also gonna be taken all from PG Admin. And I'll just show you where we can get all of these in a second. So I'll go ahead and just list them. So the default user for now should just be Postgres if you just went through the default installation. And then the password. So password is gonna be the password we specified and I'll leave that as an empty string for now. And the the host is gonna be localhost. So host is localhost. And the last thing we need is the port number. So the port number, uh, yours should be, if you went through the default, uh, should just be 5432, but mine is 54324 just because I made one configuration. So make sure you don't copy mine directly. Um, do what you have here. And to find all this information, uh, it's just right here. If you go to your server and go to properties, it was this setup right here. So the host was localhost. That's my port number and the username. So if you don't know what yours is, just go back to your server and find it from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just fill in my password and um, we'll set that and we can run a migration now. So let's go ahead and open up our server and do Python. And the reason we're able to just run this migration is because I already have a database, so we don't need to run the make migrations command. Um, we'll just do migrate. So manage.py migrate. And if I go back to my database now, and in here, if I go back to tables and hit refresh, we should see all of our tables now within our Postgres database. So there we have customer, order, product, our user, and we can actually view these tables by going here and just doing view all rows. So right now, because this is a new database, we don't have anything. So we'll need to create a new super user, um, new customers and so on. But that finishes up the process of actually creating a Postgres database and connecting it to Django. So it's as simple as adding a few more parameters and uh, just running that migration. So now what we're gonna do is actually create uh, database on AWS, a Postgres database, and we'll connect it. So the steps aren't that much different other than the fact that the database is now hosted elsewhere. So the connections are gonna be a little bit different. Okay, so before we create a database on AWS, you're gonna need to create an AWS account. So if you just do a search for AWS, and I'll actually make that a Google search, um, it'll be here. So aws.amazon.com. And I'm already logged in. So once you create an account, you are gonna to need to put a credit card on file. Um, we're gonna work with a free tier, so don't worry, it's not gonna get charged unless you actually upgrade or go over certain usage. So uh, for this video, just make sure you add it and uh, just get started that way. But 
you won't need to spend anything just yet. So once you create the account, go ahead and sign in and we're gonna work with RDS. So it's a relational database service and this is where we can actually create different types of databases. So if you log in here, you're gonna see a few options and the one we're gonna select is gonna be Postgres. So in RDS, we're gonna click create database and we're gonna work with Postgres, but you can use uh, whichever one you want and the process is pretty much the same for all of them from my experience. So we're gonna select free tier and we're gonna leave all the defaults here for now, but I'm actually gonna set a username. So I'm gonna call mine Dennis Ivy. And again, I need to remember this information when for when I connect to my uh, PG admin account. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create some kind of password. So I'm gonna do, um, go ahead and just type something in and I'll confirm that. And I actually think I misspelled the first time. So just double check that. Okay, so we created our password and as we scroll down, I'm just trying to make sure I don't miss any steps here. Um, there's something in uh, this tab right here that we need to make sure we set. So in, public, in publicly accessible, make sure you set this to yes. So this basically means that we can work with this database outside of AWS. So if we leave this at no, um, we won't be able to log in. We're gonna get a connection error in PG admin. So make sure that's set to yes. If you didn't do this, um, you can actually change this from the database, which I'll show you. Um, we can update this later, but leave that there. And we're gonna work with all the defaults. So VPC, we're gonna leave that to default. And the port number is gonna be 5432. So we are gonna need to remember this port number for when we connect. And we're gonna work with just password authentication. So we're not gonna set up an IM user or anything like that. And let's see, initial database name. I'll just call this demo underscore one and so far all the defaults look good so let's go ahead and just create and this is going to take a couple minutes actually so i've seen this take up to about five minutes so just let this run and i'll get back to it once it's ready okay so this one took about eight minutes to complete but now that we have our database we can access it by clicking databases here and Within here, there's a few things that I wanna show you. So um, that modification of that um, access level, so whether it's publicly accessible or not, can be changed right here. So while this reloads here. So if we accidentally set that to no, we could go ahead and change it right here and go ahead and save that. So that's how you're able to update that. So let's go ahead and open this up again. And the next thing I wanted to mention here is that once this is on a server, we're actually gonna to need to change up something with our parameter group. So this is basically a way of allowing a certain connection to our database. So right now, because we're on a local server, we don't need to change this, but we do need to later on set the inbound method. And I will address this once we're putting this up on a server. So now that I got that out of the way, what we need to work with is gonna be this endpoint. And this is basically like a, like a URL path to where our database is stored. So if I copy this and if I open up PG admin, so let's go ahead and close this out and let's create a new database. So if I go ahead and actually we'll just do, um, go under demo, under this server, let's go ahead and create a new server. And this is gonna be live DBs. And for the connection, instead of localhost, we're gonna pass in that URL parameter. So this uh, endpoint right here. So it's just a database endpoint. We're gonna pass that in and the port number, if you wanna confirm that is specified right here. So port is 5432. And I'm gonna pass in the username, which I set to Dennis Ivy. And the password, I'll just go ahead and type mine in. So the password I set on AWS when I was creating that. And if I hit save, this should connect me to the database. Okay, so perfect, the connection is made. If I look here, uh, live DBs under database, it's demo one. So it creates a couple of uh, other databases with it, but this is the one we wanna work with. So if I open up the database and go into tables, we currently have no tables there, but once I make the connection in Postgres, 
I can actually uh, start working with this. So let's go ahead and change this up. So the host right here is going to be that URL endpoint. The port number is going to be 5432. And I'm going to give it the new password. So I just gave it a random password and I'm going to delete this account anyway. So that's not going to be an issue. And I'm going to set the username and the name of the database, which I called and I already forgot, but um, where did I put that name? Actually, it's in PG admin. That'll be faster to find it that way. So I just called it demo underscore one. So let's go ahead and do that demo underscore one. And if I save that, I'm going to need to run a migration again. So we're just going to do Python manage.py migrate and should create all those tables on our database. Okay, so that creates all the tables. If I open up PG admin and refresh that, we should see our new tables there. And the cool thing about this is that this database is now live. So if I want to access this database from another computer, let's say I'm working a remote somewhere, I can actually log in with these credentials and access this. And when I put this up on our server, this database is a real database is fully accessible from anywhere now. So that's a really cool thing to accomplish that AWS makes very easy for us. So um, right now, everything's on a live database, but on a local project. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is actually um, set up S3 buckets on AWS, which basically is a way for us to store these static files. So I'm actually not going to host our static files or images in here because that's just going to be a lot for our project to handle. These will actually be stored on AWS. So we're going to do that too. So that's also going to be on a local project with um static files on a live server. And then finally, we'll just close this out by putting this project up on a real server. So it's publicly accessible from anywhere. And we'll connect a real domain to this.